most people think building an AI agent on NAN is the hard part. But here's the truth. Getting the right nodes in place and getting it somewhat working is just 20% of the work. To get agents production ready is where 80% of the work actually happens. And it's all in the prompt. I'll show you the exact prompting framework and iteration process we use to build AI agents and workflows that businesses can actually rely on. If you're new here, my name is Rob and we've pushed over 300 systems to production across all of our clients at Wingrowth. Now we help businesses implement AI automations and systems using NAN. So in this video, you learn how live agents differ from the videos you see online that are really just fancy demos. And you learn our complete prompt structure, how to handle edge cases, and how we use Claw to write better agent prompts way way faster. Now let's quickly touch upon how writing prompts for agents or AI workflows differs from just prompting ChatGPT. First of all, you have no back and forth. So the agents or automations need to essentially one shot consistent output. Second, tool coordination. Agents need to use the right tools in the right order every single time. Number three, edge case handling. Essentially, agents need to understand what to do and how to act if there's any errors or some data is missing or the data is just all wonky. And finally, consistency. So the same agent and prompt should get the same output over thousands of executions. Now, there can be different agents and automations that you have to build. For example, if you want your agent to generate SQL queries to pull data from a database, it might look a little bit different. But the main structure that we always start from is as follows. So here we have an AI agent and we use system message for all of our prompts. Uh, another tip is for you to use the expression because then you can, if, if it's fixed, you know, you can only do it like this, but it's not very intuitive. We always go for expressions. Um, so I can show you on big screen. You might see a lot of different prompt structures online for AI agents. From our experience, it doesn't matter that much what sort of structure you use. It's more so about how well you iterate and optimize the prompt through actual development. Regardless, this is the structure that we always start from. First of all, we have overview, which is one paragraph of what is this agent and what its primary role is. We then add context, essentially why this agent exists and what the problem is that it solves. We then go into instructions or step-by-step -step process the agent should actually follow. We'll give it tools. So we just list all the available tools with descriptions. We give rules for tools. So it's sequence and uses them correctly. And if there's any dependencies, like you need to find the opportunity before you actually update an opportunity in the CRM then uh, this would be outlined here. Uh, we'll also always want to give examples of, okay, what is the most likely input that it gets and what is the actual output it should give. We always want to add some sort of SOP as well. So standard operating procedure, which is sort of like a high level workflow from start to finish. Um, what happens when and in what order. And then final notes is where we add a lot of edge cases, error handling and validation requirements. So I'll show you the actual CRM agent, which is a, an actual sub agent, but um, this has a pretty long and defined prompt. And it took a lot of time for us to actually get this all down. But if we go through this, first of all, we have the overview which is you are a CRM agent connected to high level via HTTP. Your primary role is to handle customer queries by interacting with the CRM to retrieve or update contact pipeline and opportunity data. So then we also add context, essentially what will be happening. We will be sending natural language queries such as find Rob's email address or what opportunities are open for Rob. Um, what some of the high level access to tools are in the CRM itself. So contacts, pipelines and opportunities, uh, what it can do. And first of all, if no data is found for a query, respond politely that the requested information could not be located. Now, sometimes while the error handling might be in final notes, we have to bring some instructions or very strict things actually up into context to make sure it's consistently doing what we want it to do. Sometimes we've seen that in final notes, it kind of doesn't put as much emphasis on it. 
and it doesn't do what we want. So we have the instructions essentially here. Parse the user message to determine intent. Use the appropriate tool. We already outlined a lot of tools here because as you can see, there is a lot of different things it can do. And it needs to combine a lot of different steps as well. And these are the actual instructions. Then we uh, highlight all the tools for what it can actually do. And then we get to rules for tools. Now, for the actual rules for tools, you can do best estimates based on your previous experience with agents and what you should add. But truly, really, it comes from adding the tool, making sure it uses it correctly, and then all the edge cases that you do through your testing or playing around with it, you just add it to rules for tools. So for example, when using change status or stage, you must first use get pipelines to get the pipeline ID required to in get opportunities that you must use second to get opportunity ID, which is necessary to change the status or the stage of the opportunity. So you can just tell from the way it's written, uh, there was some level of frustration when we wrote this rule for tools. Uh, but the point of that is that we saw that the agent wasn't really treating that tool correctly or doing the correct order. So we put this into the rules for tools. And as you, as you can see, there are quite a lot of them here. As you can see also there, we have hard coded some user IDs here. It's not always the best example, but because this is very static for us, it doesn't really change. That's totally fine for us. Then we go into examples. Essentially, we do input, action, 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 output, just to make sure it still orchestrates all the tools and calls them correctly. So an example would be natural language query, find the opportunity associated with Rob and modify its value to 1000. And then it does all the actions. And this is the output that we want. So as you can see, this is a little bit more in depth, but then we have input, output, input, output, input, output. Then we have the SOP, which is standard operating procedure. As you can see, we'll have listen for incoming chat messages, analyze the message to identify the intent, use the CRM tools, handle missing data, return the response to the user on error send to try again. So essentially this is just a, a different way and a higher level way of doing the instructions. And finally, we have final notes. Always validate the correct contact or opportunity is being referenced before performing right operations. Be polite, concise, and accurate. And finally, use the think note to handle ambiguous or complex logic before proceeding to action. And finally, you also see, I'm not sure why NAN is not showing it. We are on expression, but we add the current time as well. Uh, just to make sure it has that data if it needs to bring it in. So another thing that we like to add in our prompts is time variables. So I'm going to this other example agents that we have. And in the actual inventory agent here in the system prompt, you can see that we have variables for times, current year, current date. Um, for example, if today is this, then August means August of this year. Uh, this is just to make sure that whenever the agent actually gives or queries something like a database, like a SQL database, when you say, hey, how much money did I spend in August? It actually gets August 2025, not August 1998. Another nifty trick with actual variables, what you can do is you can set an edit field node before and instead of essentially hard coding in some IDs or things like that, what we can do is just pull in Rob ID as the string, Rene ID as the string here. And what we can do is if you're on the expression, you can go into the actual system prompt. And instead of this right here, we can see is JY, JY. We can pull in the actual previous uh, set node variable and add this here as well for Rob. And what that means is instead of actually going through the entire prompt or if you're chaining multiple prompts together, you can just to change any of the IDs or, or variables, you just go to the set node or edit fields node and you can change it right here. Okay, so let's say you got your first iteration of your prompt actually already. Now, how do you actually start 
figuring out what are the edge cases that you need to test and how are you going to start testing them. First of all, each agent that you build will be a little bit different. So the potential edge cases will always be a little bit different. But some of the first ones that we always start from is are the actual natural language queries case sensitive or insensitive? What happens if required data is missing or what happens if any of the tools uh, do not work for the agent? A big one is what if the user asks for anything ambiguous or what if the input is somewhat ambiguous and more specific things that might come up in everyday use for that specific tool that you use. So for the CRM agent example, it could be what if two contacts have the same name, what should happen then? And then you literally just start working through them, uh, whatever ideas you have. It might be a good idea to kind of note them down in a separate Google Doc or just on pen and paper. So you don't have to go back and forth all the time uh, between the system prompt and seeing what happens. But it's a good idea to have some sort of change log as you keep developing this, especially if there's an edge case that is taking a long time to fix or is not working, it's a good idea to have that change log. If you do that on Google Sheets, what you can do is you can export this and throw it into a cloud chat to ask for help as well. So for example, some of the iterations we might do is into the rules we add or rules for tools is always perform case insensitive uh, searches for names in our CRM agent. Um, maybe something like before querying, normalize the contact name. And just going through edge cases like this, thinking what could happen, how would I just use this agent if it's a natural language query agent in everyday life and seeing does it actually mess up. When it does, adding specific rules for tools and how it actually should be used and building up that little uh, Bible here. So there are also four patterns that we've noticed where we kind of use very similar language across all of our agents or even AI nodes to make sure that we get more consistent and better output. So the first one is mandatory tool sequence. So whenever we have compound um, actions that the agent needs to do with different tools, we use something like when using tool B, you must first use tool A to get required data or whatever reason why uh, tool A needs to be called first and that would go under rules for tools. If I quickly look into the actual prompt here, we can see when using create opportunity, you must first use get pipelines to get pipeline ID essentially is, is the example here. The second is output format enforcement. So something like when writing SQL queries, write them as a single line with spaces between clauses do not include line breaks or new line characters. So um, we often see that the output format might every now and then have some funky stuff in. So we always want to say, do not include this or these specific characters as well. So as an example, you can see this agent does SQL queries to uh, query a SQL database. <laughs> Uh, when writing SQL queries, write them as a single line with spaces between clauses. Do not include line breaks or new characters. The third thing is really graceful fallbacks that I already mentioned as well. Um, if no results are found, respond with some sort of format that you want it to always respond in uh, error cases. And maybe also give like a potential uh, mistake that came from the input or something like that. Uh, one of the things that AI l really likes doing is fabricating data every now and then. You might even see that on ChatGPT window when you when you talk to it. We like to use never return empty responses or never fabricate data uh, when we use this. Now, if you have something like a SQL query agent, it doesn't really fabricate data because it generates a SQL query or SQL prompt or code, and then it sends that to the database and then the data comes in. So it has really no chance of uh, fabricating data. It just comes up with the way to get the data out. But if it does happen for whatever reason, never fabricate data. And if it still is doing that, then you can force it a little bit more with something like critical or important uh, in caps lock. And finally, I already quickly mentioned that again, but it's context aware defaults. We've had this issue before where um, for whatever reason, it picks like a random year 
uh, upon very natural language queries that just make sense to us humans. So for example, when user mentions a month without a year, assume current year, you will need the variable uh, for the most consistent output there. Uh, when user says this week, assume Monday to Sunday of current week. Once again, for something like that, a variable of what's the time and uh, date right now needs to be included in the system prompt as well. Now, I also quickly showed this actual agent system prompt. And as you can see, it is a little bit different from our sort of main prompt structure. The big difference here is really database schema because this agent generates SQL queries to then pull data from the database. Uh, what we really wanted to have is the database schema, which is all the IDs and the types of the actual uh, rows. So with the database schema, we just want to make sure that the agent has context on what the structure of the database is for it then to be able to actually generate that SQL query. As you can see, it's pretty pretty long and it has a lot of titles here for all the all the different categories but it also has the type of data that it is for example integer eight and finally here is how we actually use claw to help us write the a prompts for the agents essentially the way it goes is we're going to give it what we're trying to do what this agent is supposed to do what sort of tools we will give it and that comes from sort of just thinking about it and whiteboarding it out before we start developing or as we are developing. Um, we give it the prompt structure that we want it to use. So as you can see, it's the same one that we've used and uh, a few example queries of ideally what that would look like. And as you can see, it gives us overview, context, instructions, tools, um, rules for tools, examples, 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 and final notes for edge cases, error handling, validation requirements. So this just helps us avoid writing that much out. And we can take this and start iterating on top of that. Now, mind you, it won't one shot it. And a lot of the edge cases, it might just assume and it doesn't really happen this way in real life usage, but it's a very good start. And instead of having to write out a few hundred words, you can just take this and start iterating and adding rules for tools and all the edge cases that you see as well on top of that. Now, this was a short and sweet summary of the way we actually come up with prompts, the way we write them and the way we optimize and iterate the prompts throughout development to make sure that they would also work in production. If you are a service-based business looking to get AI agents into your business, or if you already have ideas and are just looking for trusted partners to execute on those ideas, feel free to book a call uh, with us at Wingrowth. You'll find the link down in the description below. This will be a quick and sweet intro call where we just see if what you want to do can be done and if we're the right people to do it for you. And if you're just looking to learn how to build AI agents, systems, automations, we also have a free school community where we share our builds, JSONs and everything else that we learn uh, when we actually build and work with clients and push systems to production. So see you inside.